Welcome to the next video. Hopefully you've just moved directly onto this one because this is gonna be a lot of really great information you wanna make sure you pause the video for and write down in detail. Or just continuously watch this video over and over again until you can remember all of this information and where to go and where to find it. So let's talk about researching your competition's hashtags first. This is something that goes along with some of that competitor research you did a couple of videos ago. This competitor research is specifically targeted towards hashtags. So when it comes to looking at hashtags of your competitors, this part is really, really simple. So when we're looking at our competitors, something that you wanna keep in mind is that you're looking at like-minded Instagram accounts and going deep into more than just one of their posts. Really good Instagram accounts utilize an average of 200 to 300 and, or even more different hashtags every single month. So being able to test out a variety of hashtags and then look at, let's say, your Sprout Social data at the end of the month to determine which hashtags did the best is the strategy you wanna go with when you're first starting out. So take a look at Phoenix Girl Boss. If you are someone who puts together female-based events or you have a female-based networking group, this might be a really good local type account to take a look at. She has a lot of really great things going on with her actual bio, the link tree that she is utilizing, and she has a really great call to action when it comes to her Facebook group. So let's take a look at some of her posts. We can click on one and you'll always have to scroll back up to the actual post content itself and see if they posted the hashtags in there. Something that you should definitely keep in mind is not every single Instagrammer are going to take their hashtags and upload it with their actual caption. They might post it as a comment. In that case, you might have to go on a goose hunt to try to find those hashtags. And every now and then, you might not find someone who uses any hashtags that is a competitor because they've come to this point where they don't need hashtags tags and you can get to that point too. So when you come into a, an account like this that doesn't really utilize hashtags at all, the best thing to do is then to take a look at some of the people engaging with their posts. And since these are women that you could potentially be targeting as well, you can simply click on one of them or two of them or three of them and begin to look at the kinds of hashtags that they are using. The best strategy with hashtags is to utilize a healthy dose of ones that are directly related to your post, vaguely directed at your post, geographical ones, and super localized ones. So here we have a photography company. Let's take a look at all of the hashtags that they're using. You can tell that this account doesn't have a whole lot of growth going on, which is totally fine, um, but they do have a lot of hashtags. This is something that if you were a photographer, these hashtags would be great to look at, mainly because they include a variety of really localized and popular based hashtags that can help you increase the reach and impression share on your account. And the way that you can take these hashtags is pretty simple. You can grab them, copy them, and then paste them into a Word document or Excel spreadsheet. This strategy and finding these hashtags is really essential to finding like-minded accounts that you want to be able to pull up in the same Instagram feeds with. Another thing that you can do is take a look at the other accounts that you might have pulled up from the original account that wasn't using any kind of hashtags. In this account here, you can look at all of their posts and they have a really well put together Instagram profile, but not a lot of engagement, which means they're probably using tons and tons of hashtags. Here we have this blogger who's talking specifically about Maple and Ash, which is a restaurant located in Scottsdale. You can see that she's utilizing hashtags that are directly related to the Scottsdale area, and that also includes Phoenix, since it's more of a county or more of a metropolitan area for people to look into. She's also utilizing hashtags that have nothing to do with the localized area and hashtags that are gonna have a ton of different people posting into that hashtag. So let's take a look at hashtag new restaurant. Hashtag new restaurant is separated into two sections. There's top posts and then the most recent posts. My suggestion is never to engage with any top posts. 
unless you actually know the person. The reason being is that you're not really going to be seen and you're gonna be flushed out by the other hundreds of people that are also engaging with that post. So take a look at some of the ones that have lesser engagement because then you'll have a better chance of being able to comment and engage with someone who will probably engage and comment with you back. Again, with this Instagram account, we have a lot of really great content and it has a very aesthetically pleasing profile. There is more engagement here, which is awesome. And you can see that they're using less hashtags and they're actually posting it as a comment. This is a tactic that a lot of people have said, don't ever do this because for some reason they thought Instagram was discontinuing their posts from showing up in a feed. And really Instagram doesn't really do that. They gauge how many posts of yours they're going to put in the feed based on the kind of engagement that you have with that actual post. So back to the example that we have here, the Etheridge team. They have a variety of hashtags that are all very, very, very locally based. They're only targeting people that are looking at and using those hashtags specifically, which can be good for any kind of real estate or super localized kind of Instagram account. But when you're trying to grow and reach clients or customers from outside your localized area, you need to include some of those vaguer hashtags so that they can find you outside of the area as opposed to directly inside your area. So when it comes to trying to pick hashtags based out of the ones that you've researched from competitors, which ones you wanna use, the easiest thing to do is to take a look at the actual hashtag itself. So in this post here by the photographer we were looking at previously, let's just click on this top hashtag. Hashtag beyond the wanderlust has 659,000 plus posts. That's not too bad. You might be thinking that it's quite a lot, but in reality, when we're looking at hashtags that have 11 million or even more millions of posts happening with that hashtag, then that's gonna be something where you're going to find your posts sinking all the way to the bottom because new posts are coming in every single second. You're never gonna get the chance to have your actual photo viewed within that hashtag. So having a hashtag that has a lot of posts happening will still give you a better chance, but we also wanna look for hashtags that are not necessarily being used that heavily. That's where your localized hashtags are gonna come into play. So we can click on something like Flagstaff photographer and see that we have significantly less hashtags, only 13,000 plus. That's not terrible at all. When you're looking at what is the lowest number of hashtag posts that you should be looking at, don't go for something that has only a few hundred posts to it. Anything that has over 10,000 posts happening within that hashtag are the hashtags that you want to focus on using. Anything that's above a million, I definitely highly suggest you don't go for those hashtags because they're just not gonna give you any kind of credibility. One thing that I wanna point out when you're going through your competitors and looking at hashtags to use is you can do a little bit of two-timing when it comes to your research that you're performing with hashtags and what kind of people you wanna begin to follow. So like I said in the beginning, if you are someone who is a female-based event, this is a female-based event. There are tons of different users engaging with this post that you can go and follow and that you can go and like. So when you're performing your hashtag research, the best thing to do is to jump into the people who have liked this post and it'll pull up a nice little list for you. Don't go and spam follow every single person on this list. Click open a few different accounts take a look at them, like a few of their posts, maybe comment on one or two things, and then hit the follow button. And if you feel so inclined, you may send them a message and say, hey, I really loved the message that you had when you posted about the Rise and Posh Tumblr. Something that kind of gives you a better connection than, hey, check out my profile, yours is cool too. That's annoying, don't do that. So once you've gathered all of the hashtags that you plan to begin using or testing out, the thing you need to do is pull them into an Excel spreadsheet first. This is where you're gonna be able to enter in all of the data that you might be collecting from say, Sprout Social. And you can definitely begin to categorize the number of hashtags that you use, the ones that have the most engagement, and then shift them into an orderly fashion so that you can see from highest engagement to lowest engagement and begin to filter out some of those lower engaged hashtags. What I like to do with my Excel spreadsheets is to even narrow it down further and create different sheets according to the niches that I am creating. Most of the time I keep all similar niches together. So photography, motherhood, Crayola crayons, 
Lego. I work with a toy store, forgive me. And you can also put in Barbie hashtags and you can still have 200 plus different hashtags within those super niches like Lego and Barbie because you wanna include hashtags that also have to do with the type of people who are going into utilizing and looking at those Lego based hashtags. So something like targeting moms who have young boys that like Legos. You don't always wanna use the hashtag, hashtag Lego, hashtag dinosaur Legos. That's gonna get redundant and you're gonna be drowning within those hashtag follow chains. Something that you want to do instead is use a hashtag like hashtag boy mom or hashtag boy motherhood so that moms who are talking about raising boys can see different posts that you might have about Legos. Another thing to keep in mind when it comes to hashtags, don't overuse the same hashtag constantly. There are a lot of people who like to use the hashtag, hashtag team motherly. It's a great hashtag and I do get a lot of really great engagement when it comes to that hashtag, but you can't include it in every single post because then it's gonna begin to look a little bit spammy when it comes to the algorithm. Something that you can include in every single post would be more like a branded hashtag or a hashtag that is literally the product you're talking about. If you talk about nothing but Legos and every single one of your posts really hope you're selling Legos or that it is your main bread and butter when it comes to getting and earning money. Otherwise, try utilizing a variety of hashtags, especially if you're a toy store that has Legos available. Maybe think about doing hashtag best toy store or hashtag best Phoenix toy store, something that has to do with the local area and your actual industry itself. You do want to have some people from your industry engaging with your content just as much as you do the actual customers and clients that you're seeking to gain. Now, before we begin talking about the hashtag formula that you should follow, I want to talk a little bit about where to use your hashtags. There are three core areas where you should be using them in your bio, in the comments and in your caption. One area that you really wanna focus on in, in terms of where and how many hashtags to include in your post is if you want to comment back with a hashtag or a different hashtag every time, you can't really be able to do that if you don't have any room within the hashtags you've already utilized. So if you're constantly using 30 hashtags in your post, there's no more room for your account to add any hashtags. And any hashtags that anyone else adds to the actual post itself aren't gonna allow your post to pull up in the feed because you're already utilizing those 30 hashtags. So the best thing to do is to use probably 20 to 25 different hashtags rather than the full 30. Another area that you want to talk about having some hashtags would be within your caption. This could be in two different ways. Within the actual text of the caption that you're writing. So if you're talking about Instagram tips, you can use hashtag Instagram tip of the day and then go on to write the rest of your post. Or in the caption, you can write the entire caption itself and then at the end, do the dot, 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 dot or the big, huge, giant space and then load all your hashtags there. The other area you can include hashtags is on your bio. Now we've talked about this when we began discussing how to best create an Instagram bio that would allow consumers and clients and customers to really engage with your profile on a cold call kind of basis. Within your bio, you wanna be really, really creative when choosing which hashtags to include. So maybe think about a branded hashtag and a hashtag that categorizes one of your skill sets. That way, when someone goes in and types hashtag Instagram expert, you'll be able to have your profile pull up within that hashtag. The final thing we're gonna talk about are the three different kinds of hashtag formulas. Now, these have to do with your level of success and what you find to work best. Just because I'm saying one of the strategies is five to 10 doesn't mean that having five to 10 hashtags is gonna work for you right off the bat. Most of the time you need to be using at least 15 to 20. That's a good happy medium. And if you really wanna boost your engagement and really try to push for some heavier results, 20 to 30 hashtags is where you wanna live. Now, within each of these different levels, there are different kinds of hashtags that you need to include. 
within the five to 10 range, the 15 to 20 range, and the 20 to 30 range, you need to have at least half of those equating to a localized area. They can be anything from the direct city that you're talking about, so hashtag Scottsdale, and then moving out a little bit further and including some surrounding cities and areas, and then moving out to maybe a statewide area where you're tagging hashtag Arizona or hashtag Arizona life or hashtag AZ mom so that you can incorporate a larger scale of audience for that hashtag specifically. And this doesn't mean that you necessarily have to do this all the time. Again, it mainly comes down to what works best for you based off all of the information that I teach you in this class and what you test out. When it comes to other types of hashtags to include, you need to have some industry specific hashtags as well, at least one branded hashtag, so that when you do become big, beautiful, and out there and popular and Instagram famous, people can see all of your posts under one huge hashtag and other people can begin using that hashtag as well. Something that I really love that REI, the outdoor equipment company did a couple of years ago was they launched a campaign called opt outside. And there are tons of people who use hashtag opt outside even when they're not talking about REI. But the clever thing with this is that anytime someone goes to look at hashtag opt outside, REI's products are gonna be sprinkled throughout because it's also categorizing the top posts from there. And since REI is a huge brand, you can be guaranteed that they're always gonna have a top post within that hashtag. So using hashtag opt outside is really a fantastic strategy and one that I highly suggest that you try to utilize for your brand as well. One thing that you can do with branded hashtags is begin to think about how you're going to utilize that hashtag within a campaign or a competition or a contest or, or whatever that you might be hosting on your Instagram account. As you begin to start utilizing more hashtags, so into that 20 to 30 hashtag area, use some super vague hashtags. Ones where you have more than a couple hundred thousand, you're in the range of 700 to 800,000 people utilizing that hashtag. Just so that you can appear within that feed, because there will be the occasional Instagram user who goes through the entire hashtag feed, because they just have so much time on their hands. I don't know how. Hashtags are an important part of every single Instagram account. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're always gonna use hashtags for forever. It just means that you need to be strategic in how you use them going forward. As your account begins to grow, you will probably need to start tapering off the number of hashtags that you use. And that's a great way to test how sustainable your engagement is on your Instagram profile. A lot of the time what I'll do is as some of the accounts I manage begin to grow is I'll stop using hashtags for about a week and I'll see how those posts do in that first week compared to the second week without using hashtags. Lastly, when it comes to your hashtag research, again, it is about finding your own way and finding tools that work for you. For me, there is a really great tool from shesocial.co. They allow you to have access to their entire bank of hashtags and create your own lists. The only thing that's not great about their platform are the fact that once you create these lists, they're gone after 30 days. So you have to make sure that you're exporting all those hashtags to a file on your desktop so that you can refer back to those hashtags and reutilize them down the road. A lot of people will say that you need to be using a variety of 300 hashtags every single month and that it needs to be 300 different hashtags month to month. That is insane and totally not right. You need to be using hashtags that work for you and work for your brand. If you're gonna use 300 plus different hashtags every single month of the year, you're never gonna know what actually works for you. So start slow. Work with a couple of different hashtags. Maybe start with 100 for the month and really understand and engage with the data you collect from the various platforms you might be utilizing for your data collection. So that was, again, a lot of information when it comes to hashtags. If you have a way that you like to find hashtags or a new form of research that you've been trying out when it comes to your hashtags for your brands, let us know in the comments of this video and hit us up in the Facebook group and let us know what you've been doing. Anyone that's willing to share their own strategies of success is someone who's always going to be successful. There are no secrets when it comes to social media. Everyone knows everything and does everything almost 
virtually the same way. So always be open to collaborating and sharing the data that you collect on your account with others. See you in the next video.